<laughs> the sound of the airship muddles by. As we welcome you to Inkwell Society, and I blow out Ben's ears. He's okay. Hi guys, everybody. Welcome to twitch.tv slash D&D and Inkwell Society, where we have a bunch of hoodlums that have somehow hijacked an airship and are escorting <laughs> a very large owl towards Ondere and away from the dangers of the city of Sharn, where only about, God, what is it, like a fortnight ago, you guys were all bottom feeders. Pretty much. <laughs> I have to double check. We have roughly around two and a half weeks. I think it's only around two. Maybe, maybe a month. Nope. No. Nope. We did have a couple of episodes that were pretty compacted. This is my theory that all elves are literally one year away from being archmages. <laughs> okay. It's like they spend a hundred years learning how to do all the spell things and reproduce everything perfectly before they go off on their own. And then within a month, they like level to 20. <laughs> or die. Or die. Or die. Mostly die. <clears throat> Mostly. Um, so let's uh, let's real fast drop it over to Ka for uh, some announcements before we jump into the game. Announcements. So Bye. always show your love to World Anvil, WorldAnvil.com, because they make great campaign tools that we use here, and we think you should use it for all of your timelines and notes and maps and everything to keep your campaign organized, so you're not digging through books like we do. Of course. The Rook and the Ravens got a little book. Speaking of books, they let you do campaign journals and keep cards for your spells and the secret notes that they pass you and all those wonderful good things of wonderful design. You can see them at therookandtheraven.com. Go order stuff there. Wormwood, of course, makes our wonderful dice trays and dice holders, and they make dice towers. Mm. They make all kinds of woods. You should go check them out. They even put special scripts on it. We, we, you saw that we have a special... Special giveaway we gave away that had cool little Elder script on it. Yeah, that was like <laughs> earlier this week. If, that was my favorite. If you know your Cthulhu myths, that is. Oh, if you guys want it. Are we able to tell people what it said now? You can. Go for it. I don't know what it said. It's, it? it said Inkwell Society. It did. Oh, it was nice. in like a cool, like, I, was it actually colored wood or is it like a gemstone kind of thing? I don't oh, think it was an inlay. It was an. I think it, it was, was definitely. Was it? it was definitely it was an, an inlay. I thought it was. It might have been painted, but it, it might have been a painted inlay. <coughs> yeah. like, uh, I thought it was painted. It was gorgeous. But it was. It was carved into it. I'll yes. ask. I'll ask the guys. It, it was, was definitely an inlay. It was but. definitely carved into it. <clears throat> this man knows his wood. He's a wooder. <laughs> what so, would you know? Wormwood.com is where you can find that stuff. Of course, campaign coins, where we get to hand out coins, <clears> which <throat> we don't have because we're broke. Well, you're broke. Well, I got an airship. Yeah, you, you didn't win that. That was a fake. <laughs> I got like 18 copper. I'm baller. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right, away. right so, away. Yeah. so Grizz is buying dinner for everybody. <laughs> you can get at campaigncoins.com. They have all these cool little denominations. So you can hand out coins to your players. And instead of them keeping track of it on sheets, they can actually have stacks on the table. And if <clears> you <throat> steal it, then that's their tough luck for not paying attention. They should watch out for thieves. Ooh. Idle champions, of course. <laughs> Idle Champions is on all the cool platforms. It's on Steam, it's on PS4, it's on Xbox. You can go play by watching and doing nothing but watching. But it's cool. You can level up and you get to set all your characters up to get all the bonuses you can. You may even be able to get Blanya at some point. There's all kinds of cool things with her, like RPG. You can get the RPG bonus. And they're like the top free to play game on all the platforms. Do that. Good Stroke. going, guys. <clears throat> of course, we've got your typical things you can do with level up dice. Level up dice. They make the best dice. <clears throat> if you're in the United I States, really like you guys, I'm I'm sorry, yeah. If you're in the United States, it's usa.levelupdice.net. Go check them out. They've got cool dice where they actually crush up gems and then they smush them back together with different patterns and stuff to give you these neat little things. And they're awesome. Other than that, we've got these guys doing things. He's, you can catch Sig over here on his, his stream. Twitch.tv slash Sig Neutron. And uh, I also have a podcast called Spewtron, which is available on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, all those things. Does <clears throat> the opening theme song for that include vomit sounds? I could add them. Yeah, yeah. if it's Spewtron, I definitely. Yeah. Okay, I will. I'm imagining lasers and 
and other noises. No, that's <laughs> that's Futron. Synth Synth Wavetron. Oh, it's it's the, I do make a lot of silly songs that uh, I play during the thing. Oh really? Sig Wave. Yeah, Sig, Sig Wave. <laughs> Does that mean that people can buy your song albums? Uh, I'm working on actually uh, like getting that account or whatever so you can add songs and stuff to iTunes and stuff. So. No Spotify yet? Uh, nope, not yet. <clears throat> no, not yet. <clears throat> yeah. I'll just put them up as Putron, I guess. I don't pew, know. pew. Putron. Putron. <laughs> DJ Putron. Yep. Kai does a uh, podcast too. Yep. Life Action Role Play. I think you dropped something this week, didn't you? Uh, or no, that was last week. Yeah, that was last week. Should be another one uh, next week. Uh, we do a cool podcast. Uh, Podcast on Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, all of the all of the the podcast things, all the pod sources. Mm -hmm. You it's too good. can become pods. Yep, and it's all about LARP and role play and uh, how to kind of immerse yourself. In <laughs> <the character>. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I tried. For a little bit. Close. And you hear their money. Now well, we have to mop up that section Violet, of the, of the stage. It's okay. It's okay. I'm the only one that's gonna slip on it. <laughs> that's the only wow. exit. Man. <laughs> we can't Great get out of here run. now. I guess we're playing D and D until it wipes that up. It'll yeah. just be deck saves, guys. <laughs> dex, dex. I can climb over this table. <laughs> I think um, that would be all of our announcements. Other yep. than thank you for watching D and D. D and D is one of the best yeah. games you can play. Go check them out at dnd.wizards.com. See, they've got some new books coming out in Ooh. about a month. I'm not sure if we can talk about it yet, other than the fact that it has ships in it. Oh. I ship that. Oh, it's full of ship. Yep. You voter believe it. You voter believe it. <laughs> How do I get that out of your system now? Uh oh. Why? Uh -huh. You don't think we're going to be punting well, during the game? I don't know. It depends on how far I can punt you off an airship. I don't know. He doesn't want I'm, us to rock the boat. Yeah. <laughs> I get this sinking feeling that, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's we're going to keel over this episode. Oh, man. It's, it's only because you're masters of, of punting. <laughs> so with that being said we will set sail time, <laughs> time for us to drop anchor and get to it yeah. did you hear this yet? no, 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 no. <laughs> still, still tolerable swabby okay alright um, let's see oh and then lastly uh, Kyle and I have already discussed we'll be at GaryCon uh, a little bit later, and uh, you'll be able to see some other valuable wizards. Oh yeah, maybe Kyle also no, may. No, don't don't jinx it. I may be doing other things. I have a question. Yes. Why is it called GaryCon? Because every time I Gary hear GaryCon, Gary that Become makes more way more sense. Commemorative. I was thinking SpongeBob SquarePants. The Gary no, the not the snail. snail Gary. Yeah, the snail Gary. No. Of... I was wondering. I should it's know just better. A convention of famous Garys. It yeah. is not. It is named yeah. after Luke's dad. Oh. We all wear different. Awesome. Uh, there is a there is a thing where we all wear different Hawaiian shirts because that was a thing. Um, but I have Hawaiian a Hawaiian shirt. jacket and pants. Of course. Ooh. Yeah. I, I don't have a Hawaiian vest. That would be a little overkill. I don't have really? Hawaiian what? things. That would be a little extra. Well, you would know. I, I ship it. I have no Hawaiian things. So if you want to send me Hawaiian shirts, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, if you play Neverwinter. I'm the voice of Dernan. Yeah. So there. I saw that video. Isn't it sweet? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. He, uh, like, they they sent me that like last week, like last Friday, and they're like, here. And I was like, how long do I have to sit on this? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, only for a week. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. All right. So recaps? Recaps. Do you guys want to try recapping? Last time we were here, we had finished delivering some recovered goods for money That's true. and some people have done some gaming of their own you shouldn't cheat that much i didn't cheat that much not that time he thought he thought he won a ship but he was full of it i got cheated you did for once for once <laughs> so we all got a bit of a rest before we all got together to talk about what happened and rose was not around we assume she's wandered off with her hangout in the park muscle boyfriend. Sounds we haven't met him, really. Sounds right. So the three of us decided to go to the Old Dominion to talk about what the heck happened without being eavesdropped on. And while we were there finding out that Felix had decided to get us a job escorting hooks without asking anybody. <laughs> These are all fair things. I mean, it, you can't. Yeah. Deny that. No. 
He said something about, oh, secrets will be revealed. I don't know. We'll find out. Did you really? Is that what you said? So I, I mean, I'd believe it. <laughs> yes. Game. I'm pretty sure uh, I got put up for a bet. Yes. We didn't. We don't know about that yet. Yeah, I don't know. In game, but no, no one, idea. no one has said you've been put up for sl- indentured servitude or slavery yet. That's a pit fighter. Oh wow. Uh, we also don't know many things. As a result, we were getting to plan how we were going to get Hooks out of town so he wasn't killed by the syndicate. When some people showed up, starting with Scarlet Smoke. God Smoke. Or what was the name? Nickin? No. No. She's not allowed to call her. She's not allowed to call her Nutella anymore. So, <laughs> Scarlet Smoke shut up. We found out that they she's gonna kill all three of you. All of us. She, she, <laughs> she found out that she brought in a bunch of her friends who we recognize from other encounters. Uh, Thunder Spark, which Grizz decided to beat into a Mr. Punchy shape. Uh, we have Larry's brother, who was going by the name of Rook. We also had Clawson. Clawson? Clawson Cla- is yeah. his name. Clawson is his name. But uh, he was Roost. going by the, sorry, the Roost, not the Rook, the Roost. Um, then we had Felwyn who showed up, who was at that time going by the name of the Amputator, but no one seemed to like that name and didn't want to call him that. So <laughs> we're not sure what he's going to be going with next time. The mad scientist formerly known as the Amputator. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Beaker. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, of course, Scarlet Smoke was there. So that was their little group talking to us about what had happened before with Latch being a renegade from the society who had decided to band together with them in order to protect the kids on the street. And they took us to the secret lair underneath the Old Dominion that we did not find, where we could see the mannequins where we could put our costumes if we ever decided to get actual costumes. And a few little miscellaneous items we needed, like, I don't know, armor. (coughs) Yeah. So after that, we found out that Felix was walking around with a spying device this whole time because he thought he had a key to a ship, but he was wrong and didn't even bother to check it. Instead, was getting eavesdrop on by the bad guys. So all of a sudden knew what we were up to, so we had to hastily run to the Cocoon Saloon to find the secret room. Hey, if you want to make these these summaries, you can, but until then, it's my story. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. There's one point of view here. This is what you get. I don't remember you checking every key that we found for illusions. You'd be surprised. I did. <laughs> and <laughs> the tech magic is a wonderful thing. So. We ran to Cocoon Saloon to the hidden room that. Whoa. I can imagine Lawson in his room every night doing just a ritual for like seven. Like he doesn't trance to sleep. He's just doing the ritual for That's detect right. magic on everything in his room. Well, Hi, Moon. You only got to. No, Hi, like, Sheets. You only have to cast it once and then you just scan the place and just do a quick check. I mean, it's true. like you don't have to cast on every item. It's true. Anyway, so we were going to the secret room we didn't know about that. Felix had been privy to visit where Hooks was hiding <clears throat> and we decided it was best to go to the airship now before they came to kidnap him before he could leave. On the way, it turns out the airship, the Icinger too, decided to sneak up on us as we were making our way to Ondere where the chateau that someone had won was supposedly there as a safe house. We got into a bit of a tuffle. Uh, I believe Grizz threw hey. a bunch of people who were delivering pain off of the... I introduced a lot of people to the ground. Yeah. There were a few. There, there were, people need to get more Featherfall tokens or something. <laughs> you, I'm not you sure. You think maybe they had some. They may have. Uh, maybe. Thanks, of course, the ones it. that were asleep really couldn't activate them, so I'm sure they hit the ground hard. <laughs> that was the other thing. <laughs> so, at one point... Felix kept getting beat up by everybody. <laughs> Literally. By a lot of arrows. Everybody. <laughs> Spells and arrows and stabbed. And I tried to do what I could in order to keep him up and on his feet. So I wasn't a target. <laughs> 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 and proceeded to keep Hooks alive while everyone on the deck was letting all the pirates destroy the ship, including the helmsman, which caused the whole ship to fall apart. 
Actually, and I'm pretty sure the other ship crashing into the ship caused the Again, ship to fall apart. if we had had a helmsman who was still there and not thrown <laughs> off the ship by the pirates, we probably could have avoided that. <laughs> However, we did what we could, and unfortunately the ship became a tumbling pile of timber. While we were floating there, Mr. I look like somebody else had to disguise himself as the other captain, who conveniently enough we had let die and plummet to the earth. Convenient. Convenient hard to do. <laughs> Convince the other pirate pilot to come and pick us up. So we safely landed on this other ship we acquired and moved into the cabin for torture while we decided to keep going to on there in order to catch whoever was there for the syndicate. And that is where we are today, wondering how Felix is going to keep convincing this guy he's the captain, or do we just threaten the guy to make sure he keeps flying us where we want to go. All right. So, with that. As Felix ducks back inside the cabin of the airship, making eye contact with the rest of the party, the slow, low, rolling thunder of the famous Braylon thunderstorms that love to hang about, Sean, can be seen coming down south from on there, just over the forest and the trees. And far off to your right, somewhere in the distance, a very large lake that gleams like silver on the horizon. And that's all the intro that I'm giving you today. You guys are in the air on a ship. There's not a whole lot you gotta look at except for the interior of the cabin that Captain Hayward the Cruel Breeze had stylized in different motifs of wind. These are new, so I, if I get caught and then don't, you know, they're just, I just got them and I, I don't have the, the Kyle, yeah. But they're good, I think. Uh, so, as you stare about the different parts of the cabin, you see stylized motif, wind, storm, those clouds with the gusts blowing across, and how the desk, and the bed and everything else like that seemed to actually all be one fluid piece of wood as if the cabin was carved all at once from a giant tree. As I recall, you might have spent quite a bit of time bordering this area that you fly closer to. So, like a puppy with its head out the wagon, as Felix enters back into the cabin, closing the door behind him, Grizz stares longingly out towards the silvery lake, the pine that encircles it, and the small, well, the thriving but small town of Chavalot in the distance. Maybe it's small enough that only you know it's there. But you do recognize this type of wood, the interior here of the cabin, as being different than the exterior of the ship, but also of the great trees and that are from the Eldine reaches. And that's where we will start. Could you say that you kidnapped us, like in the recap, like when we went in? And what was? What did I you think say that's something the that Grizz would actually just flat out ask. Oh, we could just go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> sure. Right. Um, I have a quick question before we stop. Sure. Um, so, how many? Uh, so, I was under the impression I took them to the hold. Is there a hold? Is there just the captain's cabin? I don't know how big this thing is. Uh, I thought that we had gone into the cabin. I can take them there instead. Cool. That works. Okay. So for now, that's where we're at. Great. Okay. 
unless you want me to narrate another five minute intro about the behold. <laughs> no. no. <clears throat> You look like you have something to say, Chris. Oh, oh I'm a prisoner? What? It's not anymore. Oh. I mean, we're pretending, but... It depends. Uh, I'm guessing that the uh, the pilot is not in this room. The pilot him. is not in this room. He is up on the deck. Oh. Uh, and he's, he's like a helmsman, so yeah, he is piloting it. Uh, but his job as a dragon mark, which you would know, uh, as the as House Lurendar is essentially to check in with the elemental, make sure everything's okay. Uh, what you would know from the process, and I would guess Lossian would know. Um, I don't know that Grizz would necessarily concern himself with it. Up to you. But elementals inside uh, the different binding stones like Kyber Shards that are used to uh, power the airships and whatnot, elementals inside those seem to be, or are thought to be at least contented with their lot in life. They're almost in like a stasis, but for all we know, that's like a sandbox or a playground, like they're just having a good time. You might actually get some sort of energy, inner, uh, some sort of inner dialogue going on with uh, a certain other elementally bound individual if you uh, so chose to gather more information about it. Yikes. But, to answer your question, the helmsman is not down here. Great. All right. For now, we are keeping the charade because the uh, the pilot uh, is the only person who can get us to where we're going. Once we get to where we're going, I guess we'll have to make a decision on what we do there. Mm. Um, it seems simpler that way. While we start to formulate a plan, if this is the captain's quarters, I'm going to start looking around and looting all of the cupboards and things like that and see what's in here. Okay. Do you want me to look and see if there's any magical traps first? Yes. <laughs> also, maybe you can check some keys if we find any. That would be good. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a few minutes to, re to detect magic. Okay. Uh, so you don't uh, find... Well, you do find one glowing kind of magical um, out the outline of a magical thing that is underneath the bed, but it appears to be like strapped to uh, the bottom of the bed and appears to be kind of like um, almost a, not fully rainbow, but like a little less of the, of a curved, um, type of shape from where you're standing if you investigate it further. Like a semicircular arc? Kinda. Uh, but not like into quarters like like only a few degrees. Okay. And so is it the curve goes down or the curve goes along the length? Or? Along, so it, it basically like if the bed has a couple of different um, b uh, boards to it, it would probably the length of it just kind of start to curve to one of them. It's not hyper-curved to where it's going to peel across. Do you examine it a little closer or? Okay. So as you pop down, look under the bed, you can see that there's what looks like a scabbard. Uh, not a falchion size, more scimitar, not quite as, uh, uh, but a little bit longer. Sharp and sword. There's just the scabbard, not anything oh, in it. There's the scabbard. <laughs> uh, so we're right. It's magic though. Check and see if there's an invisible sword. <laughs> <laughs> you guys watch as uh, he tries to grab in front of the scabbard multiple times. Maybe it's a ghost sword. Right, well, around. Sometimes I worry about you. Well, I worry about me a lot. Do you like this? No, I think. Do you like this? Maybe. No. See, detect magic allows you to know what type of. Uh, what, I, what I think that. Yeah, and I think that this. Alteration, maybe? No, maybe. Mm. I would suspect that that might be some kind of sharpening or cleaning enchantment. Maybe. I mean, that's what I put inside the uh, a scabbard. Mm -hmm. Like, chink, maybe you put it in and it comes out magically honed, so it's actually got better than realistic sharpness. 
Better than realistic sharpness. Chris, you want to stick your, one of your knives in that? I think it has to Chris, be. Chris, do you have any knives? I think it has to be one of these. It's kind of curved. I don't know. Yeah, I'll do. <laughs> you do have a knife. I'll try it. <laughs> uh, have yeah. you used that knife recently? Uh, I don't. Maybe. I hand the scabbard to Grizz and then walk away a few feet and do this. Probably, <laughs> it's probably got someone's blood on it. Sure. Yeah, yeah we'll I'll save it I some spray, it right? Yeah. yeah. So when you pull it out, there is uh, no more blood on it, and the, the blade gleams as if it had been, just been both cleaned and polished. Is it wetted? Hmm? Is it wetted? What's that? Is it sharp? It feels pretty dry. No, now is it wet? Is it wetted? Like with a wet stone? Did you sharpen it with it? Oh, maybe we'll find clean? out. I'm gonna start going through the. Does he have a desk? Yes, there's a desk. I'm gonna start going through the drawers and desk, looking at the papers, if there's a book, a manifest, those sort of things, kind of looting around. Okay, so uh, you do see that on the desk there is uh, a plate, like a face plate or a, a name plate, kind of on the bottom of the desk right in front of him. Like if you were to look down after sitting there, you would just see like this big, and it's got his name on it. And you notice that uh, his nickname is spelled with a K. And, so right, and uh, as you go through some of the drawers, there's the standard accoutrement. As when you open one of them, Grizz sniffs out immediately a, like, almost a drying rack. As you pull it out, it's, uh, the, the top one is attached to the entire bottom, and it actually pulls out to be a drying rack of jerky. Oh, look, jerky. I'm gonna walk over there and just... <laughs> All of it? Yeah. Okay, so well, Grizz well, goes to all of yanking the, the jerky out of the... Uh, there, you get about eight pieces of these very long strips of bacon-like jerky. Oh, yeah. uh, roll me a nature check. And as Grizz comes over and kind of bullies you out of the way, no, turning his back to you, kind of muscling you out, uh, you turn your attention to the other one, you find a locked drawer directly underneath the cruel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to the left, you can go through a couple of more things. You find a uh, silver plated letter opener. Great. Uh, you find a couple of uh, quill, like pen, and uh, a couple of bottles of ink. Okay. And some, what looks like letterhead from a very recognizable to you emblem. Oh, uh, it looks like the syndicate. It emblem. does look like the syndicate's illegible emblem. Yes. I always imagine that to look like just some kind of bundle of sticks, like a death metal album. Then that is what it <laughs> is. I will. That's my mental image of that. Um, uh, the Amati syndicate logo. I thought it was a non-Euclidean shape. I'm gonna let you three put your heads together and let Sig draw it for you later. Inkwell album cover. <laughs> <laughs> you can draw in five dimensions, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, um, great. Uh, I'm gonna uh, pocket a few, uh, like if I can put together with that kind of supply, a kind of like put together a, an improvised like forgery kit from that to a degree. I like where you're going. Uh, since I didn't bring mine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I might try to kind of jury rig uh, something like that of limited use. You know what, you are a, uh, you are from a family that is known to be able to uh, jury rig freely. Mm -hmm. I will give you uh, the option, if you would like, to uh, make a guidance. <laughs> uh, I will give you the option to make a, hmm, we'll call this just an intelligence check. However, you do know that you will likely destroy all of these supplies if you fail. Okay. Okay. You would ballpark the cost of these, the, the, uh, the ink, the, uh, the ink you probably could salvage anyway, but putting together all of this stuff in a way that you would do a, a nice size forgery kit, you might uh, lose roughly 25 gold worth of, or 25 silver, right. sorry, worth of accoutrement. Yeah. I mean, I 
mean, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Um, what does guidance do? Do you have an extra D4 on your skill check? So I got a 13 on that nature. Okay. Holes. I did not do well. How, how well did you not do? Not have, um, if it's a straight intelligence check with no skill use, it is a flat uh, nine. A nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you don't lose the inks. You are going to botch up some of the quills and whatnot uh, as you're you're doing that. But Mending. <laughs> how many uh, how many turns do you want to spend mending things <laughs> till they're fixed? <laughs> okay, we got it. We got a freaking trip to another country. You do. Oh, God, <laughs> you do. I will let you. Uh, I will let you make another roll for this later. Okay. If if we recall, if we remember. Um, so what you are able to pull out of these is that after a little, a little bit, you notice that, uh, or like as you're going through and pulling these out, these smell as though they come from a, um, a fowl, but a very large one. (laughs) And as though they've been, uh, almost fermented in a way. So... To anybody else's nose, like your companion that is a large fowl, they don't notice it because of the fermentation, but you are able to pick apart the different delectables within there. And you have about eight. Cool. I'll go and check on Hooks to see if his burns are acceptable considering he got fireballed. Okay, make me a medicine check. And. Felix, as you are stumbling around on those things, make me a perception check, please. Uh, that would be. Am I at negative one for perception? For perception or for just, as well. just for the wisdom? Or do you not have perception as a, a skill? I do not have perception as a skill. Okay. Uh, so that would be a thirteen. A thirteen. Mm-hmm. So you. It doesn't take a whole lot for you to notice as you're fumbling around trying to to make this thing and uh, make the forgery kit that the um, the the nameplate yeah. is able to be shifted. Oh, all right. I will give that a wobble. You give it a little wobble, and you're able to slide it up. Mm-hmm. And there looks to be like a small slit the size of a very specific silver letter opener. Put it in, yep. twist it, and you hear a click as the drawer underneath it unlocks. Okay, great. So as that pulls out, you start to see, oh, I thought you were raising your hand like I was wondering if I was done yet. Um, not yet. <coughs> okay. So as you, as you see that start to pull back, you notice that there's a, a, a few more letters of parchment that seem to be a practice for signing a K over and over and over and over again. And then you can see him, there's a couple of times where uh, where it looks like he's really enjoyed the K, but then has made it into a, like actually finished writing out cool. Okay, Uh, I'm gonna, file all of those away for later and uh, maybe try and use them as additional reference in case I need to uh, uh, falsify his name <laughs> and signature. Okay. <laughs> uh, you root around in there and you do find one that has his entire name and signature on there, but most of them are just him practicing his nickname over and over and over again. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and you do find that, well, actually you can roll me another intelligence check. And while you're doing that, Lossian, you check Hooks over. He appears to be singed. By the time you get over there, he's kind of like preening some of the burnt quills out, popping them off, letting them go to nestle down to the, to the bottom of the uh, airship um, cabin. And there are patches of him that seem to be mm, light but he does not appear to be um, bleeding too profusely from any of the dried, cracked flesh. Okay. Anything else that you need to do for that, or? I don't know. I was just gonna see what I could do to fix it so that he wasn't hurting or just make sure that he had health. 
Is there anything that you you can think of that you would do for that, or not with my current spell slots? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I only got one more. So. And I what'd got, you get? I got twenty three. Or the medicine. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay? So uh, you are able to see that like he has a wing that could uh, stand to be splinted, concerning considering he basically hit the ground pretty hard, had somebody else fall over him. Uh, the captain gave him a nice stab. You're able to kind of dress some of those wounds and to splint his wing. Um, and he s- for some reason, he just seems to interact with you on a very, like he's watching you, but he's not, let's see. Usually when birds or other animals and stuff like that are, confident enough with you being around they don't like he's he's okay with looking at you straight on which means that he's actually not looking at you at all he trusts you enough to do okay. these things he's keeping an eye out for everything else that's going on that he's not eye cocking at you <laughs> grizz and his uh snacks are something that seem to be catching his eye but he does not seem to be making any movement or even looking into it what do you got five <laughs> all right um consistent right now yeah no so uh you get the feeling that there's more to this but it's just escaping you right now some of the stuff on the paper yeah the, there's okay. something about the signature that strikes you as familiar but that's all you're getting right now okay so as you're looking through all of these things grizz is there anything else that you'd like to do I'm just gonna go over there and flop down on the bed, like, and just chill, rest, because, uh, yeah. Okay. I could have beat up. You feel as though this might be one of the nicest kind of down uh, mattress style situations you've ever been on. It's definitely nicer than than anything you experienced in the military. Um you probably might not even know that something like this had existed, given your current state of affairs in Char. Felix might, but not for a long time. And you just feel like the as you plop down and the sheets go up a little bit around. And then you feel like, like a stabbing, kind of like a needle in your, like the back of your ear. You roll over to the side and kind of reach back there and you feel a long quill poking out of one of the pillows. Is there any well inspected? Is there a... As you pull them out, you, you pull the pull it out, you kind of like struggle to get it out of the the fabric. It's this red crimson actually feather that you would recognize from the Eldin Reaches as being a blood hawk feather. The entire bed is seems to be very, very much set in that as the the quilting or the down. Is it? This is mine. I'm taking this uh, with me when we leave. It's mine. Oh, okay. No one can have it. It's mine. Felix, did you find any spell books? I don't think so. You have a look. This is what I found so far. Don't. Oh. And then I'll continue to rummage. When he was casting spells, is he casting it like you do as a sorcerer? Not sure. I didn't really pay attention too much to that. Really? He was trying to kill you. Yeah. I was mostly dodging arrows and blades and flying pirates. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'll look around and see if I can see any evidence of wizardry as far as knickknacks and things needed for a spell book. You don't, uh, well, you do find kind of like some reagents, like a, like a, a secondary bag of um, secondary spell component bag that looks like it's been rummaged through recently, but not that it is, uh, it hasn't been fully restocked. Uh, but you are able to find uh, a couple of 
what you would think as being some of the lower end stuff from from your experience uh, in your home, uh, on your home continent, some of the lower end reagents, uh, you're, you're guesstimating somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 25 to 50 silver is kind of the top end pieces in there. Is there anything particular that you might be looking for, Lawson? Um, one, I was checking to see if he had, if he had any um, spell components like bat guano, sulfur. There is bat guano. Um, if he was using uh, rose petals and sand or crickets. Those are all in there. Um, see what, if he had any things like a diamond or... There's not a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> building up, building up. <laughs> and, uh, maybe a pearl. There is a small pearl. Oh, there we go. <laughs> but you are unsure of the value, value just yet. Um, you get the feeling rummaging through some of this that uh, there are also some ingredients here that look as though they might be used for alchemy, but you don't see any alchemy stations here. Okay. So you guys have pretty thoroughly checked through the area. Grizz is taking a little bit of a short rest, I'm assuming. Uh, if the rest of you would like to do a short rest based on this uh, during this, you, you're welcome to. Right, sure. Okay, so uh, go ahead and feel free to recoup uh, spell slots if you have those things to do, uh, if you need to study and whatnot. You, uh, about an hour, hour and a half into the journey, uh, even as Grizz lays on the bed, gets up, paces over to the window, goes back to the bed, gets up, paces back to the window, it doesn't appear that you guys are, like, you're moving fast, Mm -hmm. for being airborne, but you're not moving fast for being like on an airship. It doesn't seem that you're traveling at kind of the top speed that you nor that you normally would. Um, and you see Hooks at a certain point after maybe like your fifth trip back and forth to the window. You guys kind of notice Hooks perk up a little bit from where he was, he was kind of perched in the corner. Perk up and his head Jimmy straight to the door. Uh, I'm gonna uh, use um, my uh, disguise self at will, mask of many faces, and turn back into the captain. Okay. You hear a knock on the door almost a moment later. Um, captain? Coming. Okay. I'll be on the, uh, the bridge. Hey. You hear the dup 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 as his feet go back up, and uh, you guys are left in your silence a little bit. What, him? Uh, what do you want to do? You said you're just going to keep pretending to be the captain. Sure. I mean, the other options are kind of messy. Also, I don't think any one of us can fly. It's true. So. All right. Well, keep it going. He doesn't need his legs to fly, does he? Well, Depends on where the dragon mark is. <laughs> <laughs> on that chilling note. I'm going to go aloft. All right. <clears throat> so you head up. Uh, you head out the door, unless you have anything else to do first. Um. Yeah, uh, Lushin, would you like to come with me? Okay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the cover story is that you have defected. Oh, I'm defective. You're defected. You are working for the Amanti Syndicate now. Wasn't I always? Were you? <laughs> no. Fine. Do you want to come or not? Yes. Great. So you are you are going to tell them if they ask that you have defected and you are working for the captain. Of course. Great. Let's go. I'm just over there like rubbing my face. Like, you know, dogs like they like the pile of blankets. They just like start like doing this weird. I'm just over there doing that. I'm going to look at, look at the bed wistfully and be like, there's no way to get that smell out. Grizz, will you make sure Hook stays safe? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, okay, so heading up upstairs. Yeah. Okay, so as you guys head out the door, you make your way up to the bridge. You can see the wide 
spread open. Like there's every now and then, maybe between some clouds, you'll glimpse another airship. But it looks like you guys are actually kind of off, heading in a north, uh, a northwestern pattern, as if you were actually trying to stay away from the usual shipping lanes uh, that appear to be like the most direct route. Um, and you are getting further away from uh, like Silver Lake in a way, which is in the northeast from where you are. But closer to the Eldine reaches, even back towards the southwest, you can see what looks like swampland and bog and marsh back in that direction. Uh, as you make your way up, you can also see a storm that's rolling in from the uh, from on there as well, uh, and then a nice long swath of small trees, and then getting larger and larger and larger as they seem to go back further, which is maybe a little bit of a trick of the eye, but at the same time, you would also know that the great trees in the on in the uh the Eldian reaches that border around uh on there and Braylon are rather massive as you make your way up there you see him uh at the wheel and then every now and then like he seems to kind of like check in like close his eyes check in and you can see a dragon mark that pulses from about mid shoulder, or sorry, mid uh, wrist, and then goes back under the cuff that he has rolled up on both sides of a long oil skin black long coat with dark blue, what looks like maybe a kraken, maybe some sort of agile squid, something like that, uh, as his main garb. He's very Lossian-esque, but his hair is tied back in a ponytail and shaved across the right side. But blonde and, uh, well, we'll say distant. He eagerly awaits you to, Captain? Yes? Um, you, you're, uh, the run-in we had, I, I think might have uh, jostled our uh, Eldridge machine. I think there might be a crack in the shard. And uh, the elemental seems to be a little temperamental today. All right, best course of action? Um, we might be able to put it down and uh, maybe let it settle for a little bit. And uh, maybe that'll do. Maybe maybe he just needs to, maybe he just needs to calm uh, or, or, or snap. I don't, I don't know if they nap. I don't think they nap. What kind of elemental is it? This one's a fire elemental. Does it need to burn something? Help clean all the ship? I, I don't know. I thought that's what they like to do. Well, they, they're kind of in their own little ecosystem. I assume he just kind of burns all day. When we talk, it's more of like emotion and feeling. He seems tired. Oh. Talk is a... Wait a minute, who are you? Oh. You should introduce each of yourselves to each other. He is working for us now. I've convinced him to uh, turn code. Uh, you said pay. Correct. Oh, okay. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lossian. Uh, hi, Lossian. I'm um, Greeley. Hi, Greeley. Uh, hi. Uh, what's your um, what's your uh, signifier? Your, your code name? Like I'm gold tooth. Oh, that's pretty nice. No, it's... Okay, yeah. I didn't know I needed one. He'll get one soon. You kind of have to have one for out here because we don't want people to know our real names. Like, if you call me Greeley, I'm going to punch you in the face. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, no, you just call me Goldtooth. Oh. Or Golden for short. Goldie? Golden. Oh, Golden. Oh, okay. I don't know. What's a good... What's a good... Maybe? The captain does all the namings. He, he punched the last person in the face that tried to name for him. Oh, okay. That's how I got the gold. I guess, guess we'll have to work on that. Well, captain? We'll work on that. Are you letting him talk for you, captain? No, I'm deciding. I haven't picked one yet. We'll get one in, uh, in, a, in a few moments, I'm sure. I'm more concerned with the ship. 
So you think that is the best course of action? Uh, yeah. I, I think that we should probably, I'm, I'm skirting the shipping lanes as usual, uh, but- As expected. Yeah, uh, but the, there's a nice little forest area over there that we can, we can set down in. Uh, it, it might be okay with a, a little rest. Uh, I have to go down into the hole and see how damaged it is. I haven't left the deck because we're a little shorthanded. You, no, you have to maybe set, shorthand. Don't sorry. Do you have to set down on land or do you set down on water? Uh, we we can probably keep it at a hover, or we can find a nice place to kind of nestle down. If if I find uh, some uh, flocky trees, I could probably gently lower it. I think we should flock and do that. <laughs> Okay, we can flock into that. I mean, make it happen. All right, uh, it'll probably be about a. We're we're a little slowed. It's it's probably going to be a couple of hours before we we hit that. Uh, and especially, it would already be a little bit of a drive, but we're going to have to. Most of these things. Just... With the way that it's going right now, maybe be able to touch down in the morning, maybe early, early hours. Honestly, it's probably better if we are in the twilight thing, people won't be able to see us slip into the tree line as well. Fine. Um, we may or may not make it over the border, but as long as we get up over where the, uh, the tree line and the mountain kind of ranges, I think we'll probably be safer. It's important that we don't get spotted. Yes, standard, standard, you know, mm -hmm. pirating. 10, what year is it? 998. <sighs> so how long are we gonna have to be down? Just the night? Uh, maybe, maybe the night, maybe, uh, you know, th th this is right along Sybaris's belt. We may be able to find another decent shard. If we can find a Sybaris shard, we might be able to uh, enhance the, the binding well, the captain here is really, really good at binding oh, is elementals, uh, especially his, his some of the work that he's done with the Sybaris Shard has uh, been rather impressive. So uh, I, 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 would, I wouldn't put it past anything, uh, and I don't want to be golden teeth, so. <laughs> Better than golden tongue, that's for sure. Oh, I like that. Regardless. Uh, make that happen, um, and make sure you, we're not spotted. Yeah, of course. Did, uh, did you get the, um, I, did, were you able to secure the... Oh, yes, the, the avian is currently secure. That, but the other thing that was in the, I don't know how much you want me to say in front of... It is fine. The nameless. Nameless, that's a good one. We'll call him Ghost Walker. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, Ghost, Ghost Walker, all right. Uh, it's a little wordy, but maybe but can we call him something else for short? Snowy. I like, I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, so I can, I can speak freely in front of Snowy? Yeah. Who's Snowy? That's you, man. No, I'm Ghost Walker. He said one name. Uh, remember, I'm I'm golden or gold tooth. So golden is a little little quicker. Little little rolls off the golden oh. tongue. I didn't want to say it. Uh, <laughs> so wouldn't it be Walker? Just tell him. Okay. Did you secure the package that the avian would have had that he was supposed to have with him? Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to get paid when we got wherever it is that you're taking us now. Uh-huh. We're going to intercept. We're, we're going to get our payout. Okay. Um, all right. I'll, I'll uh, get us closer. I'm, I'm a little worried about that storm but maybe we can set down before it reaches us. Maybe I'll go down and look at the machine. 
just do you, I'd rather you not destroy my well, like if you, it, I said look at it. Okay, if it feels like you're taunting it, it it might <clears throat> break the binding on its own. I thought it, it was a machine. The Eldritch machine element. has just, the elemental inside it. Oh. Because that's where the shard rests. There's actually multiple shards binding it. Oh. I don't okay, know which. I won't, I won't poke it. Get, just, yeah, don't poke it. I'm just going to take you down there and show you it. Yeah, that would be good. I need to assess some of the damage as well. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just be up here. Good. Do you need like coat or something? Oh, I've got my long coat on. It's a it's a house thing. It's actually. He starts to go on this long diatribe <laughs> of like why, like almost Lossian esque, because he's really proud of his house, mm. and that is actually something that keeps you guys like when they see uh, when one of the other half elves of the same house, Lirandar, sees that he's actually wearing the Lirandar jacket. It keeps him from getting reported, which keeps you from getting reported. That's very nice. I'm just going to walk back into the cabin. Into the cabin? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go down. Cabin first. Uh, mostly because I want to... Uh, does the did the captain have, like, some changes of clothes? Like, some finer clothes? Wardrobe kind of thing? Yep, he does. Right, I'm changing into some of those. Okay. Um, and then I'll head down into the engine room or the crystal room or whatever we're going to call it. Okay. Yeah. He seems to have some sort of like a large feather. Um, I don't know if fetish is the right word, but we'll, we'll call it a, um, proclivity. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm picking up how much of a, uh, uh, feather brain. Well, no, he just seems to have, ex have extremely in for, uh, avian like creatures. And I think he has a fancy, he fancies himself a hunter of them. He's, you would get a little bit of the feeling that from this is it's more like he's, he's obsessed with the air and flying and avian creatures in the way that a, a normal sea captain might be obsessed with the ocean. And you know, so like some of the, uh, some of the carvings on the inside, like even when you walk back in, you see Grizz like scratching at some of the carvings that are the knot work and all the other stuff that's on there that look like large flying creatures that you've never seen before, like a flying kraken or things that would normally be in the water. Nah, sky krakens, I hate it. Sky squids, no, don't want this. <laughs> no? Nope. So as you go back in, you see him doing that. You grab a couple of changes. It's not like, it's not like he has like um, an overt like a, a jacket that's all like feathers and sure, stuff sure. like that. But I, next to that, I mean, I mean, I'm expecting like you know some like interesting like designs that look vaguely like feathers and things like that. Uh, and I'm sure he fancies himself quite the like sky captain dashing dandy kind of thing, which is absolutely something that Felix aesthetic would appeal to. So, yeah, he, uh, Felix would definitely change clothing into something he would feel a little more fitting. I feel like you're just upgrading, yes. like, your everything. Like, you've Absolutely. got a, a large pouch full of platinum at this point. <laughs> you've got uh, a, a club, an airship, possibly a villa, possibly a new wardrobe. Yeah. Um, and while I'm changing, uh, if I could have a word with Hooks. Yeah, sure. Hooks, what was specifically the captain looking to take from you? Apparently he was looking for a package. Yeah, my gold bag. Your what? To go bag. Go bag. Your, oh, your to go bag. Go, go bag, not to go. To go is food. Oh. Go bag is survival. I see. It's... Was there anything in there that uh, the captain wanted, or particularly the syndicate wanted? Probably. All right, well. What's in it? Ooh, there was. Was? I don't have it. I think it went down the ship? Sharn. Uh, um, it went down with the ship? Probably. Unless. Unless you grabbed it. Uh, from whom? In the cabin? It was hidden. 
I don't believe we had a chance to grab it while it, the ship was falling apart. Oh. Yep. Roll. Well, it was mostly money, coinage, some notes. Oh, banknotes. Some scrolls, potions. Just, just the backup wands for disguise. So none of this sounds like actually things that the captain would actually be looking for. Or things that people might want. Information? Or information to validate the things I was going to tell you. Right. There's definitely oh, disguise helps mm. marauders mm. silence oh. clump, 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 clump. You hear his talons I guess for uh, helps well we don't have it, so I guess there's nothing we can do about that then. We're gonna have to land. The ship yep. might be broken. It hit us hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, where? Luckily, the captain says he can fix it. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. apparently, that's gonna be a problem. Apparently, cruel breeze. Um, used to be. Well, when he was alive, he was very good at repairing and dealing with the shards. Very good at binding. Yes. Um, I don't know how good I am at that. Mostly because I don't think I'm really that experienced with it. Have you done it? Have I? I don't think I have. Oh. Give me a... Well, actually, Felix, when did you get kicked out? Pretty young. I feel like uh, he was kicked out when he was about nine. Okay. Was he? I mean, that's when things started happening between nine and 12. Okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. So let's see. Let's see how much of a protege you were. Give me a history check. No guidance for this. I wasn't going to do it because I don't yeah. know he's doing it. Yep. Um, that would be a 14. A 14? Mm -hmm. You. Uh, okay, roll me a d4. One. You made four attempts. You were successful once. Yeah. Okay. Great. But I knew, know the basic process. With, like, the appropriate text, you could probably do the appropriate process. Great. Okay. Um. With the appropriate text, you wouldn't have disadvantage on it. Okay. To put it in a, a game term. Uh, we have rested, right? You have taken a short rest. Yeah. Yes. Um, I forget. Was a was I level two uh, last game? Well, I was level two last game, and I got to level. Th no. No, you were, you've been no. level three. All of wow. you have been level three before you left Sean. Okay. Hmm. Damn. Because I'm pretty sure I used my. Um, my genie uh, spell uh, for Featherfall, yet unfortunately I realized I actually had a copy of Featherfall anyway. So that was a mistake. Bummer. Um, okay. Um, because I, I, I recall on that that you like rolled like a one or a whatever on, you, like you had it the very next turn. Yeah. I so I will, uh, I will allow you to not have sent uh, DeVry to go get okay. that. I feel like that's appropriate if you already had it selected as a spell. Okay. Well, Unless, did you use the spell slot to heal yourself? Because that could have been why. That is what I did. So you used your so mark. Have, yeah. Right. I've, okay. So then no we remember. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I plucked that out of the air. <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. I was getting hit a lot and I needed to heal myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, either way, um, once I've all dandied up, uh, we're going down to the... Um, uh, the engine room. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on how long it takes, he might end up going first because 
It depends how impatient you are. Oh, I'm patient. <laughs> Grizz, what are you up to? I'm just I'm laying on the bed like uh, like Sid from Toy Story. He's like <laughs> face down and like just like just butt bump. in the air. Like, <laughs> um, why did, did they carve this room? Because I bet you could grow it. Probably only take like three or four hundred years. Or a druid. Yeah, you can use magic. Uh, are you asleep or are you? No, I'm just watching them. Oh, so you're just you have you're just like ass up in the air, <laughs> but like, like they're laying yeah. down watching. <laughs> yep. Very uh, interesting visual. Hooks is also very curious <laughs> about your posture. You guys uh, need any help? I got that. Good. All right. Are you good with magic? Hmm. Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty good at this stuff. I'm gonna try and catch eyes with Hooks and just shake my head, and, like gesture at him, and it's like it's lucky he's house trained. You see Hooks rotate his head, basically all the way around, <laughs> come back around, and then start to slowly roll his eyes back to the other side while the head rotates back. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the engine. In that. Yes. If you're gonna have to fix it, you better figure out what's broken. Uh, all right. Maybe you could ask the elemental what's broken. I could. All right, let's go down and check. Be nice. Sure. So you guys make your way out. You can see Golden up there. Gives you a little wave. Hi, Golden. Walker. I'm clearly the captain is a bit of an abusive captain. So I'm gonna just kind of like ignore him as I go down. Sure. Just like stomping around, try to like put up more of a demeanor of like, mm, grr, kind of. Okay. I mean, if he's willing to punch out the tooth of one of his uh, crew members, I should probably keep up that illusion. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, along with the other ones. And as you walk <laughs> down the ship, you make your way down into uh, into the hold. You go, uh, go ahead into the front there. And as you make your way down the stairs, you can see that there is what looks like a door that leads to a, uh, that is open and has a little bit of a, an alchemy room. A little, it looks like there's maybe like a little bit of a magic area in there. But when you come down the stairs, that's the first thing when you, uh, you see on the left-hand side. You also see that it curves back around. Like there's a long, almost banister in a way that is like a balcony, kind of reminds you of the old Dominion, where it, it leans back around. It's only wide enough, maybe about five feet for somebody to walk back and forth. There's railings, hand guards, makes it very easy to go back and forth. And it comes back around behind you uh, as you kind of make your way up to the left, you can see that there's like an alchemy room, like a, a room that seems to be dedicated to, uh, to alchemy and has a nice kind of glass open uh, area there for you to be able to see out of the airship and then as it goes back around you can see that in the back there's like kind of a mess hall that has another few not portholes they're not you know the, the small ones but some nice wide gaps of glass that you can see behind you as well and then as you make your way down a little further uh, or around the rest of the way, you can see another set of stairs that go down. So we've completed a bit of a spiral. And towards the bottom there, you can see a bunch of racks, and bunks and hammocks that have been stretched out uh, for what looks like the majority of the crew. At the end of it, there's another what looks like a cabin. And then behind you, taking up almost the back half, seems to be uh, maybe a bit of an engine room. You know that because even though the door is closed, there's a large plaque and it is humming. <laughs> Making a heavy humming noise. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go have a look at this. Hi, Captain. I could get used to that, to be honest. Not gonna lie. Push the door open. Which one? Uh, we're gonna head towards the, uh, the engine room. Okay. Yep. So you head back to the engine room and you can see that this basically large, it looks like a large hood, like a, it's got a, a very large metal sweeping um, manifold. 
across the top that kind of comes down a little bit on the hood. At the end, like at each kind of, um, at each sharp point around the side, kind of giving it a gazebo-esque look, there's a pillar that is essentially a uh, dragon shard mm -hmm. about, yay, big, that is slotted into some little clasps mm -hmm. on each side. So you've got about five of them that seem to be almost holding the back half of the engine room in place. Mm -hmm. The rest of it forward of that is kind of like a couple of dials, a couple of, of uh, well, you don't know, <laughs> um, apparatus that and, uh, and a couple of little seats and there's a map space there as well. So what do you think, Lefty? I think that's the engine. Thank you. Is there anything else obvious you'd like to point out? You're being snide. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to catch that. Oh, let's, yeah. let's see if there's anything broken. Yeah, let's kind of very carefully kind of do like a, a try to circle it, like see what, if this. What's it look like when it's not broken? I would presume we're looking for cracks or areas that don't glow as much. I thought you were going to talk to it. I will once I work out which bits of damage. So in the center, you see what looks like a much larger shard. And that shard uh, seems to remind you a lot of the fire mode. The interior of it is pulsing and ebbing, but it seems to be leaning kind of a little bit towards one side. like it's, And you can feel a larger amount of heat escaping that side. As you make your way around it, you can see that there is a large crack in it. And it's fractured in a couple of places. Okay. Um, can I hear anything? Like, for example, a language known as primordial. I don't know if that would be a thing I might potentially hear or communicate with. Mm -hmm. Make me, uh, do you know Primordial number one? I, I believe you do from DeVry. Mm -hmm. uh, make me a investigation check. Uh, 18. 18. You can hear, uh, as you get really close to it, you can hear what sounds like some, some harsh syllables you aren't really able to make out any conscious stream um and the closer that you get to it it starts to burn and hurt and what you are getting from that is that uh for each uh little you know for the amount of time that you spend over there you start to feel like it's this is actually really going to start to hurt you if you stay yeah, near yeah, it i don't want to cook myself <laughs> however um <clears throat> What is, uh, what are you doing in here right now? Watching you. Yeah. Hmm. So what's your opinion? Mm, that's a big crack. Yeah. Maybe you should fix it? Or he said something about super shards so we could increase the lock, bind sure. it better. Do you want to try and look around the rest of uh, I'm I'm gonna look at this. Do you want to try and have a look around the rest of the the hold of the ship, like the all of the other rooms down here, and see if you can find some stuff that we can repair this with? If you want me to leave, you can just ask. Sure. Do you want to leave and also find the things that are use might be useful? I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of things down in this hold that will be useful to us, and if we can find a replacement shard, maybe that might help. I don't think there's really replacement shards. No, but there might be something that we can kind of patch this up with. Uh, my studies usually don't say that's how that works. Why don't both of you give me Arcana checks? Yay. <laughs> you have any good time to? Yeah. Okay, good. No, I'd be bad. I'm doing exactly what Grizz would do. So. <laughs> What'd you get, Felix? So I think we should reroute the samaflange into that giant crystal and just like wiggle the hands around four. 
fitted. That's where you're going, and I was enjoying just letting yeah. you roll with it. Twenty-three. <laughs> Look, I'm an expert. I've I've seen these things all the time. All we need to do is just turn it upside down. And it'll just work. That's not how that works at all. Felix goes to turn it upside down. Stop. No. <laughs> um. Huh. Man, the tough thing about guidance, uh, especially uh, in the hands of you. Yeah, still. Uh, so what you what you recall from a lot of this is as he kind of gets in there and starts to look through some of the things is that uh, you are able to locate a couple of uh, additional clasps. Like um, I'm, I'm blanking on the word that I want for this, but like brackets or yeah, kind of like brackets. Mount, mounting brackets. Or yeah. Restraining. Yeah. Stabilizers. Hmm. Stabilizers. Uh, for that look like they would actually create like a trio behind the main, um, the power chart around the main. One. Yeah. So, so basically, take we'd be adding some more in there to the focusing restraining area so that it would actually keep the main one from leaking. Ish. Ish. Yes, sir. Did we just find more brackets? Yes. Remember, like, brackets for the signpost a few games ago? Oh, oh, the bracket. No, the bracket. this is completely different. No. Different, different kind but of yes. No, once yes. again, more brackets. More brackets. <laughs> well, it's not quite a satchel, but... So it could have been a satchel full. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what you actually see, so you see that, mm -hmm. uh, and then of the five that were around the manifold, you see there's, there's two behind each one that kind of pull that in there. And then around the larger one, there seems to be places for additional... Uh, okay. additional shards to be able to be held there. Okay. You would guess that from your knowledge of uh, basically kind of like the way the house teaches you, airships are only about eight years old. So you would know kind of just from the rough, yes. If uh, they're only like eight or so years old, then I wouldn't have that much experience with them at all. You wouldn't have that much experience, which is why I'm getting to where I'm getting. Okay, well, they had to design and build them first. Yeah. Sure. There was a lot of failure. And they do work similar to the way that lightning rails work, which are about 30 years old. And the old elemental galleons. And the elemental galleons was very similar to that. Those were, those are still fairly recent. Cool. So from what I Oh, sorry, about, lightning rails are 110 years old. So you would have gotten a nice schooling on that. Warforged are only top end 30 years old. Um, from what I can see, if we could get some extra cyber shards and we could put them in these clamps over here, then you could actually put a focusing field over here that would then prevent the leak over here. And that would keep this and stabilized. And then you could actually keep them happy inside. But of course, then they would have to actually worry about the shard, shard over here because it's going to shunt it. So you're going to have to worry about the different control because that's going to cause a problem over here with the lift. And that's going to need to be balanced over this way. So if you do that and you put this clamp here and this clamp here, and maybe that one because it's right here is where the mount points are, you can actually put more shards here and that'll be able to focus in unless you're really good at, at honing them in which case if you're able to shape them a little better you can actually make it a lot more focused like that right you That's also just know what i was thinking yes you also know that from this that these would actually likely work for kyber shards is like kyber shards could enhance most of this as well depending on the binding cyberus shards are are essentially like an amplifier for any of that stuff and cyberus shards are used specifically to amplify dragon marks. So what it okay. would, what the Sibiris shards would do, would they would give the helmsman better control over it should it break more, or okay. should you not be able to find a replacement kyber shard of that size? Is that the big right. one, right? Which one? The central kyber shard. The central kyber huge. shard is the huge one that is has the large crack in it. The other ones seem to be in fairly good shape. They don't seem to fit the binding as well, but even the, the little trio there could just take more kyber shards. Siberia shards enhance the effect of the dragon marks. Do you want to have a look around the rest of the hole, the hold, and see if we can find a few more of those shards? Which ones? The Siberia shards? shards? Or the big Kyber shard? They're, they're both pretty expensive. Yeah. Siberia shards are... I, no, I figure, but I'm still asking... Um, you can look, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, do you want to have a look around this hold for any other shards, just in case there might be a few more around. You mean like supply area? Sure. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> As I walk out, like I said, if you want me to leave, you can just ask me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that, you can see where you don't want me to leave. Uh, in Primordial, I'm going to uh, 
uh, kind of sit down and like make it look a little bit like I'm meditating, kind of like, you know, or starting a mm. ritual kind of thing. So if someone walks in, it might be that I'm chanting a spell. Can I stick my uh, head back in? Because <laughs> if you want me to leave, I'll leave right now. Just, go this way. Just tell me what you find. I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, st- I'll, I'll reach out to uh, Ifrai um, and uh, try and get his attention. Okay, so Devry comes. Uh, yeah, Ifri. Devry, Ifri. Devry, Ifri. Ifri, Ifri. Yeah, maybe. You know. Uh, so he's he pops out, or he he kind of like starts to make that that you feel the the pulling sensation against your skin, against the mark, and he starts to pull himself out, and he's like, yeah. Do you know much about how uh, elementals are kind of bound into crystal? Yeah, do you know much about, like, my name? Sorry. It, it's a little hard to pronounce. We have a contract. I agree. What's hard to, announce, to pronounce about it? This is the first time I'm speaking in uh, Primordial. Only persuasion. <laughs> or it's not deception. You're not lying. <laughs> persuasion will do. Okay. Uh, fourteen. I roll a thirteen. Oh. Okay. I suppose it's harder than most, hmm. especially the different dialects. And you didn't. You were kind of like use a little more air there than fire. Honestly, I'm in, even impressed I can even speak it? Is that one of the, the perks of our contract? It's very handy. As long as I'm a part of it, you will be able to speak it. Mm-hmm. You kind of share a little bit of my experience. So we share, to a degree, some of our minds doing this? How do you think that you know magic out of nowhere? Mm. I'm not really sure. You're not much of a... I'm more of a doer. You're a, a doer. <laughs> You're a doer. I like that. I like that. How, um, how are you feeling? I am utterly terrified by our pact. Really? You seem so in control and confident before. I am very comfortable with the powers that... Uh, we have been playing with. However, uh, the idea of this other passenger within me uh, kind of terrifies me. Um, He keeps whispering to me and he keeps saying that he is hungry, especially when I'm in the middle of fighting. Well, of course, you're you're like expending a lot of energy. Uh Uh-huh. And that's, he kind of needs the energy. What exactly happens when I let him out, by the way? When you were younger, did you ever do any type of martial training? You're wearing some sort of armor, but it's... I mean, I don't know that I would call that even really armor. Wait a minute, are you still wearing armor? Oh, no, you've got some flowery thing on. I left the leather uh, leather armor in the... Look... The colors of that leather armor do not match the interior of this oh, jacket. Oh, I believe. I am... And he pulls his pants out a little bit, <laughs> and he's just like, I get it. See? Yeah, no, they would real. totally clash with my abs. I'm not here discussing that. What I'm just trying to say is that we need to restart the program we need to if we're going to get this thing right. So what we're going to do is that's how we're going to take a break on the is. I mean, that's I feel like that's the only cliffhanger I got right now because you guys aren't at the point where I had a cliffhanger. So uh, we will be right back, assuming you're still still watching us because, is it, yeah? Because we're, is this the sync thing that I was talking about? Okay, yeah. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and do that right now then. We'll be back. Uh, We'll say, let's make it like a 10, maybe 15 minute break total. Uh, We'll see you guys in a little bit after we reset. Let's make it 15 for safety. Uh, And we'll be back in a little bit because I'm really enjoying this conversation.
What, four? Probably. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We are, uh, we got the, the computer reset. We got everything squared back away. So we will be, uh, hopefully, having no more issues. We had a little, uh, little software issue, I think. Wasn't me. I thought we were just moving into Japanese martial arts movies. Just think the, the mouth and the sound separately. Ah. Bad lip syncing? Yes. Ah. Very good. Yeah. I want to, can, can we have wire foo stunts? Like, I want to, like, do, like, some kind of flying kick across. You had the, the option of having that done with your miniature. That's true. You could but. That in the you did that during the intro. You before. know what? <laughs> if, if we can. I love a spinning jacket. If we can put together a budget. For Steve to do a kung fu <laughs> intro, I would oh friggin' love that. I feel about it. Steve, Steve, I feel like, is that something you'd be interested in? See outside? <laughs> Later. He like fixes things and just walks. <laughs> That's what Steve does. Uh, yeah, he's well, better being around it. I will say that he's probably out there watching it on his phone at the same time because he's usually checking for issues like that too. Uh, okay, so when we left. Oh, no, you were talking. Yeah, <clears throat> we, were, we were. When we left, you and DeVry had just started to have a conversation inside the room where you had been sitting, attempting to uh, look as though you were chanting magical stuff. And Lossian told you that you could have just told him to, let, to leave and then pop back in to say, you know, you could just make sure you tell me to leave if you want me to leave. Uh, then DeVry was able to come out, have a little conversation with you, <clears throat> and then uh, you, I guess, were in the middle of that conversation. Yes. Uh, but since we did a little quick breakaway, why don't we go to Grizz, who has been making his way like an impatient animal back and forth from the bed where he likes to sleep or nussel, I suppose, uh, like th like this with your. I'm just getting all the all. The, I'm just trying out all positions. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah, because you've never slept on yeah. something like this, so yeah, that's got to be like sleeping on moon rocks for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as you do that, and then you make your way over to the the window, and you kind of like press your face against it, and kind of like looking out and trying to see down the way and stuff like that. You notice that there uh, appears to be in the distance like a flock of ravens that uh, is, there, there are some that would normally be probably like lower to the ground. These seem to be very high. Higher than you recall ever seeing ravens uh, because most of them aren't really traveling in kind of the same area that you would be if you were on a, a, an airship. I don't know how many. Actually, let's let's see how many. Um, so some backstory time. You had some experience as a tracker with the Red Cloaks of Braylon, which is like a paramilitary, almost a special forces unit. But you were not one of them. And you were put out on a special assignment. So... While that is not mine to disclose, I will ask, did you, uh, do you think you did any training for airship, uh, what we call holodrops? Uh, is that like, yeah, what would a holodrop? Roll me a history check. Yeah, there we go. Just leave it up to the uh, dice, because I don't. Ah! Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to say no. I rolled a two. <laughs> a two? No, no, not at all. So you don't remember what the acronym hmm. means at all. Uh, but you, hmm. and yeah, you're not really good at that other thing. So we'll just say that <laughs> your job, you, the thing that you got roped into with them that led to the, the beginning of the end for you was uh, a tracking exercise where you got, you know, stuff that you can reveal. I won't do it. Uh, but you do not actually have any real expertise on an airship except for the time that you had spent earlier. You do know from your extensive uh, understanding of animals, at least in this area from the Eldian Reaches from uh, your, before the military, you had a, uh, you've pretty much never seen a flock of ravens this high up. 
It's a little odd, but after a minute or two of staring at them, you go back and ass up in the bed again. <laughs> Lossian, you make your way out. Which one of those cabins that I described earlier are you interested in perusing? I'm gonna go look in the alchemy room, considering I think that's where the captain goes and does his magic shard thingies. Okay, so you make your way up the uh, circular stairs, heading up to the alchemy room, and as you open the door back, you see that there is an alchemy kit, like a, a, a table, and a bunch of alchemy stuff off to the right, and you see that there is um, what would look like almost a mechanics table and a map table that actually has maps on it, whereas opposed to the one downstairs was more like just a long, wide table that should have been a map table, uh, but didn't have any actual maps on it. Um, I'd look, search through the stuff, see if there's any shard bits and pieces or notes about shard bits and pieces. So the interesting thing about this alchemy table is that uh, the legs of it and kind of the, um, the, I don't want to use the word brackets. <laughs> yeah, the mounting part that holds it to the wall. They're both actually made as bookshelves, but not bookshelves that go left or right. They just go up and you stack, basically stack the books on top of each other. So there seems to be a bit of an order. And as you go through, you can see that there is Alchemy Volume 1. Morgrave Alchemy Volume 2. On the right side, you can see that there's Kornberg. Alchemy Volume 1. Alchemy Volume 2. So you've got at least some, some Brelish, and then some Gnomish Alchemy. And then as you kind of make your way down to the bottom, you start to see some... Uh, some other books that don't really match, like some of them seem to be a little bit more like bestiaries, uh, encyclopedias. They're kind of a little bit more piecemeal. And as you make your way down to the bottom, you do find a spell book. Mm, any idea what the spells are that are in it? Not without quite a bit of study. <laughs> I'll take a few minutes and do a detect magic. There seems to be some pretty mundane uh, ingredients around there that you know that you can actually turn uh, into magic by the appropriate infusions and by doing the uh, the work that would be required from like a herbalism kit and like an alchemy kit. Like potion ingredients or yeah. not necessarily alchemical things like uh, alchemist fire or things like that. Right, but like maybe some of the bare ingredients it doesn't appear that you have enough to... <laughs> enough to do what? You don't necessarily think that you have enough to make any of it, but like some of the baseline supplies are there. Uh, and as you root around a bit in there, you uh, don't find any, any shards, any dragon shards, but you do find uh, there is one flask of Alchemist Fire. Ooh. Great. More reasons, to, uh, more capacity to create arson. That's what I have spells for. <laughs> <laughs> and then we rejoin Felix and DeVry standing there with, uh, or you are sitting on the floor, Indian, leg, er, Indian style, uh, cross-legged, looking up and down at the uh, the rippling abs as he's pointing out, like they would just clash with the, the coloring of each of the abs. So I gotta have darker pants, otherwise you don't get the same. You have to have a gradient. I absolutely understand. Right, contrast, no. right? Compare, contrast, compare, contrast. So what were we talking about? I, oh, right. Um. So the elemental in those uh, that lar rather large shard there seems to be remarkably irate. And uh, I'm wondering if you know of a way that we can try and maybe coax it down a little bit. Um, I mean, this is more of a long-term situation. If we are able to land the, the ship, we can maybe calm him, him, it, they, them. I'm not really sure how. 
elementals work in that, but we can calm them down. He starts to kind of like look around and for the first time he's like, we're in like a box. We're in a airship. My airship now. You know it's made of wood? Yeah. You got a fire elemental in there? Yeah. So I'm good. Yeah. But you can see the problem now. Yeah, why would anybody make a fire elemental in a wooden box scenario? <laughs> because wood is lighter than metal? I'm not sure. <laughs> is it? You see, like, kind of like doing this like flexing thing. Like, you see, okay. are, you, are you just trying to show off your abs again? Uh, well, they don't ripple unless you move. That's true. <laughs> it, it's all you do in this mark, just working out. Is there is there some kind of g- like gym in here or something? Like, is is that what you're really filling like this magical pack with? Is just training equipment? Oh no, um, this is magic. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, My mistake. Yes. No, it's fine. So, um, here's what, you know, um, I'm not going in there. Fair. I absolutely understand, considering you recently got out of something else. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you're one thing, because, like, you can be torn apart pretty easily, but... but like, Those are very much more about binding and keeping things inside. Sure. So, yeah. I, so what did you want me to do? I was just wondering if there's some way we can calm that person elemental down. And what does it do? Bit? Like, why? What are we doing now? Mm. I can eat it. I don't eat it because we need it to fly the ship. Wait, what? We're in a box. So the interesting thing about this box is there's a larger box around it that happens to be a wooden ship that flies in the air. I can fly in the air. Correct. I don't need a box. Never said you needed this. I, on the other hand, cannot fly. We didn't ask. I, on the other hand, cannot fly with my companions, my property, uh, and uh, a number of other accoutrements inside this large vessel that is now mine. Wait, what? It's yours? Yes. Who are you making deals with on the side? No one. I'm just killing... You're killing? Uh, hard to explain. Um, Why are you not inviting me to these things? Why don't you come along? I'm always with you! Then why are you complaining about being not present? You don't invite me out. I'm not a jerk. <sighs> well, now Speaking I of which... Like the butthole. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say no. But, you know, speaking of which, you you might want to also not keep somebody else entirely cooped up too long because like i said you're fragile the so here's what i think we can do here first off i want to go take a walk we're in a flying box okay that's cool you might want to try and be a little smaller while you're doing it but okay is he full height right now yeah right now (laughs) okay he wanted to make sure that you saw the abs (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. like so i'm just i'm I'm sitting cross-legged, and he's just standing there like abs at <laughs> eye level. I'm just talking to the abs this whole time. I'm like, yeah. So, Great. so you know, I would say that you probably want to get a uh, container that doesn't have an opening. Yeah. Do you need help binding it? Is that what you're asking for? Uh, I mean, if you have any tips or advice or methods that we can do this. Uh, We don't need to bind it right a second. Right now, I'm just concerned about this damage, and we're going to be setting it down to try and fix it a little. Oh, that's probably a good idea. You could probably stop aggravating it. That might help it from... Yeah. How do we calm it down? You stop aggravating it. How am I aggravating it? I mean, if you're using it to fly, propulsion... All right. Means it's got to burn hot. Yes. Not that it doesn't mind burning, but like, I don't know. I don't like to be told what to do. 
Sure. Do you like being told what to do? Not usually. Kind of tired of it, in fact. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I picked up. That's why I figured that, you know, this would be good. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I really don't like being told what to do. All right. Well, you want to have a roam around the, uh, the ship? My ship now? Our ship? You know, I have to rename this ship at some point in time. It's customary to name ships. I didn't know that. I, think, I know. In the other places, we just... Well, we don't have ships because we can fly. Um, so I will... Uh, yeah, you need me to get smaller? If you would like to have an explore around, I would probably suggest you be a little smaller. Uh, okay, fine. Unless you can make yourself invisible. Well, I mean, I... Can-ish? As long as I don't have to be doing anything? Just don't get noticed. Have fun. Scratch that. Do not burn down the ship. Do not kill anyone. Do not eat anyone. And just have a nice walk around. Okay. Because it's still flying, and I would really appreciate if you don't try to eat any of these shards. Because they are what is keeping me in the air. Why would I eat the shard? Or the contents of the shards. Well, it's like takeout, right? No. Fine. Okay, fine. We go back up to Grizz, who is making his third lap and seeing that the ravens are now even closer. And as he does, you can see like there's a pack, like a, a flock of them coming across the way. They seem to be getting close to the ship and then veering away really fast. And as you stop and you start to kind of like press your face against the glass to look out the side and follow them, you notice that one comes like whoosh, 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 and then just kind of like looks at you. <laughs> ah! It pops on the glass. And then it goes, whoosh, flies off. And as it does, its hands, well, I mean, its claws, like the talons, like give you like this little like. <laughs> uh, I mean, at least it didn't fuck oh, it off. Look at the hoops. Do you see that? Oh, I guess not. Ooh. Um, what? Wh what's taking so long? Uh, wait, 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 wait. They said, uh, I'm gonna go like down. I'm gonna go try to find them. Okay. You walk out the uh, cabin doors and then you walk out onto the main deck and he start heading towards the uh, stairs and you see, uh, you get this like odd sensation you're being watched as you walk towards the, the staircase and then you just hear, Captain! All right, I was doing like that. All right, I just keep walking. And you just keep walking? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's like, he looks like he wants to do something, but then at the same time, like, he seems to be kind of stuck where he is. And you walk down the steps, you come around the first room, and you can see uh, and hear Lossian kind of, like, rummaging around inside the first room that you come up to. What's going on in here? Hi, Grace. There's, like, weird birds outside. I, I don't know what that's about. Weird birds? Yeah. What kind of birds? Well, I don't know. I think it waved at me. Oh, that was weird. What do they, they look like? Birds. Uh, big they, have, ones. they have a color? You said they were ravens, right? Yeah, they're black. They're really hot. They usually so don't fly this high. Was it like, was like a crow? Or I don't know. Blackbird? There's or a lot of them. Did they have we, colors on the wings? Or just black? All I don't think that's important. I, I think it's they, they're just weird. So something's not right, I don't think. Because if it's a murder of crows, that doesn't bode very well. No, never. Especially when they're waving at you and giving you weird eyes. Although, oh, if they were ravens, well, that'd be an unkindness of ravens or a conspiracy. And those aren't very well either. Yeah. You sure they're not up to something? No, I said I think they are. Oh. Yeah. Where's the other one? He's having some alone time. What does that mean? I don't bother to ask these questions. It's best if we don't know, I think. You can go knock on the door downstairs. You go down, just be careful. 
There's yeah. explosives that, that'll blow the whole ship up if you're not careful in that engine room. I'm just gonna walk and then walk straight and not even knock. Just open the door. Okay, you open the door. Ooh. So when you open the door, roll me a per, uh, perception check. Oh, that doesn't bode well at all. You were pretty excited about that, weren't you? <laughs> what does it say? It's also very far away. What does it say? I'm, I'm going to, for that long of a throw, we're going to have to do some disadvantage on that one. Uh-oh. Well, it's a two. <laughs> we don't count things that aren't on. <laughs> okay. Let's try that again. So do it again, but okay. a disadvantage. All right. Well, then I'll roll two. <laughs> He's gonna roll better than two. Probably. I rolled two tens. <laughs> okay. Hey, perception. Oh, plus, uh, yeah, so, uh, so 11. That worked out incredibly well for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you walk in, you see uh, Felix on the floor kind of talking to what looks like a very lean, musculatured, individual and as the door starts to go you see both heads whip around to you and as you blink then only felix is on the ground you're not really sure that you saw what you just think you saw do you even know how to knock am oh, interrupting something yeah, always i'm gonna stop to get up <laughs> <clears throat> What do you need, Grizz? What was that? What was what? Oh, I'm weird. trying to fix this engine, all right? Yeah, well, there's weird birds outside. Um, aside from the eight to nine feet tall owl that we have yeah. as a guest? Uh-huh. So other weird birds? Yeah, a lot of them. Um, a lot of large ones? Yeah. No, not as big as him. How big? Why does everybody want to know the details? There's weird birds outside. I right, think something is up. And lost here. You hear, uh, as you are forward in the ship, you can hear, uh, and you're only one level down, you hear what sounds like the click clack. Very, very thin at first, but then it starts to kind of gain some weight and some measure as uh, click, clack to like maybe, maybe a giant owl is walking across the uh, deck. It's gonna cause some questions. <laughs> I'll go upstairs. Okay, as you make your way up the landing and up to the main deck, you actually see instead of it being a large owl, it is a humanoid figure. Roughly about eight and a half, nine feet tall. In a cloak of raven feathers. With a large staff staggering towards you. Hello? <laughs> You see this like hand reach out and it looks like a talon, like it looks like, and but then parts of it have this rate, like this uh, human flesh tone to it. So it's like almost dappled in a way, but it has the scale and then it's, you fly without ship. He staggers for it a little bit with why? It may not fly long on this heading. Oh? Yes. What's up ahead? What's below? What's below up ahead? Do you know of the Ashbound? No. What's the Ashbound? Do you know of the Reaches? I know that's a geographic place here on the main continent, but I've yes. never been there. What inhabits the reaches? I'm going to guess Ashbound. Ashbound of sorts. A mm. sect. Yes. Do they not like flying ships? They don't like the binding of nature 
to the will elsewise. I understand that. He wouldn't like the fact that this is powered by an elemental then. That is typically the issue. <laughs> you have one who flies. Hmm? You do. On the bridge there, they know. They know these ships require one like him. They do? You hear from the bridge. Goes like, um, a ghosty, what's going on? Uh, why, why is that? Uh, uh, he, he just kind of turned into a, a person or a bigger crow or a raven. Looks like a raven. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the name you called me? What, go Ghosty? What was the name you called me? Go uh, go um, uh, <laughs> Snowy? <laughs> Snowwalker. <laughs> I just met you, man, come on. I think you meant Walker, right? Sure. Yeah, because it'd be terrible if these ash things came after you. Like they said they like to do. <laughs> I is that, what did he say? I can't hear too much going on back up front there. Yep. Well, it seems like we're finding the danger. There's some, the Barons, you know about those? You know the maps of this area, right? The Barons? Or what were they called? The, we're flying towards the Eldian Reaches? Oh, some ash place. There's Ashbound. This place. Ashbound? Where? Ahead is down. he Ashbound? No, he's, it? A, he's a raven. Right, yeah, but don't you, you don't know what Ashbound are? No, but they're not birds. They can be. Well, then this one's not one. He doesn't, not not a one what? Um, I, I turn walker? To the, I turn to the guy, I'm like, are you an Ashbound? He pulls back the cloak hood, and he, you can see it's a large fur ball. Huh? And, like an and he goes, I'm, Ashbound or not, of one. Was it a sect? Yes, oh. I said that. No, you said it was a bunch, it was a group. Sect. It's sect. It is of people with one similar mindset. Hmm. Are you one? No. He <laughs> says no. Oh, okay, then what? what is, what is he? He's being nice. I'm gonna guess he probably likes the woods, so probably a druid. Right? Yes. See, you're probably a druid. What peculiar? Do you do you understand no, the I'm warning? Lassie. What's your name? Lassie. I thought he called you. He's he has problems. He's going to for sure. I'm okay. Wait. What was your name again? Uh, Alois. Hey, Alois. Hi. Thank you for the warning. Are you gonna help us not die? <laughs> This is me helping you not die. Thank you. If a sect of Ashbound come here, I would not be able to save you. Is it okay? Should we fly that way? Which way? You say we're going I don't know which way. way you're pointing. Yeah, I'm, face, I'm <laughs> pointing not the direction we're flying. <laughs> so like back over your shoulder, like? Well, I'm assuming that we're flying one direction and I just point the other direction. I was like, should we fly that way? Is it safe? Towards the big city? I don't know. That's not that back way. We're going north. Yes. You know That's what if we fly to west. Over? What if we go more east? Do we avoid the guys who want to kill our, our helmsman? More likely. Okay. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Alois. Alois. Well, uh, how big is the area that they protect? It's not exactly borders. <laughs> they sort of roam. There are other sects. Oh, more more Ashbound sects? No, those would be um, in like camps of other Ashbound. What you're looking for is the other sects of druids. Oh, I see. You want to sit down? I. We're gonna talk. We might as well get comfortable. He just kind of squats, but like on mm -hmm. like his haunches, and he like leans a little bit on the staff. I'm uh, slightly uncomfortable with staying aboard. Oh, you want to circle while we talk? No, I, I think that I've 
given you the message that I need to give you. I'll walk up the stairs. Well. You have a shifter? Following. So. And a so thank dandy? You. <laughs> thank you for the warning. Is one the other's pet? Mm. Who's this guy? This is a friend who's telling us not to get killed. He stands up. <laughs> oh, would you like a snack? No, I'm good. Well, so, thank, thank you. He just turns around and launches <laughs> off the deck. It turns back into a raven and just dives. See, I told you guys there's weird beds at the end. So there's some druid sects down here that really don't like us binding elementals. All right, was he one I of them? Like, no, he didn't say which one he was, but he said he wasn't Ashbound. And Ashbound seemed to not like the fact that you bind your elementals to fly your ships because they don't think that nature should be bound. So they're probably going to try to stop us they're up ahead, down on the ground. They're probably going to try to kill Goldtooth at some point because that means the ship's probably going to go down. So we either have to stop going that direction and fly some other way, or we have to land and go take care of those people by either cutting a deal or removing them. And if everybody threat. make me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ten, 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 ten. Wow. Six. Eighteen. Sixteen. Okay. So, uh, as, as the, you guys hear kind of a little bit of a yelp from behind you, coming from Goldtooth, as you can see him like kind of drop down to one knee, clutching his dragon mark, trying to kind of hold the bottom of the, the steering wheel. Um, uh, and then, the whole ship starts to shake. Grizz hits the ground and starts to roll left as it tosses him towards the stairs. He hits the staircase, tumbles down it, <laughs> takes two points of damage as he bangs his head against the stairs, toppling down, rolling head over foot, foot over head. Oh, that statement always made me confused. And <laughs> you don't remember anyway. Dum, 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 dum. Uh, and the two of you are able to keep your footing just long enough to watch Grizz topple down and then to see the airship start to shift in the air. The horizon tilting as the nose of the ship starts to lower down below the horizon. Um, I think we're gonna land a little sooner than I thought. Having a little trouble controlling the elemental there, are you? Um, yeah. Hmm, I'm gonna take the opportunity to uh, yell emergency landing. Um, get to your stations and start running up to, um, uh, up to the pilot. Okay, so who are you Fox yelling this to? I always wanted to say this. <laughs> well, why don't you say it? No, okay, yeah. Um, everyone, emergency stations. Prepare for, prepare for a crash landing. Now I want to know what each of you do as he runs up to the bridge. <laughs> from, from downstairs, you just hear, You're not a captain! <laughs> I don't have a station. <laughs> you run up to the bridge, you see Goldtooth. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I start moving towards the cabin. Hi, hi, cabin. <laughs> You're like, my, my station is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm going to warn hoops, but. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, the large elemental ring above you guys, like around, which is this one is on the front end of the ship, uh, starts to kind of sputter and stagger as it's the, the roar of it starts to kind of die out. Uh, and you see the, uh, you see Goldtooth. Uh, do you want to grab the wheel? I can maybe keep us up. Okay, good. And he lets go, kind of takes a step back and like drops down onto his knees and just stares up at the sky. And you can see the dragon mark start to glow even brighter. And he starts to work his way out of the, the uh, his long coat, letting it kind of drop down, yanking it off over the, the dragon mark. And he just starts to, to concentrate. You've seen some of uh, the Kanith 
uh, members do this when they were really heavily focusing on something. Yeah. You start to feel wind gust around you from behind, picking things up a little bit more, and you can see the blast of the air uh, of the elemental ring actually almost turn the fire rotated out, but then whips back as the wind starts to push against you. His coat flops back, hitting the back railing, and yours just kicks up around you. You and the all of the little feathery, dandy stuff you're wearing just kind of flaps around, even untucking your shirt a little bit as the gusts pull you. Uh, Lossian gets buffed against the door just slightly as he makes his way through, closing the door and Hook's jostled, kind of Grr. Got a sack of ashbound druids that are trying to kill us. You might want to be careful. Do you fly? He looks down at the sling that you've put <laughs> into his wing. Mm. Maybe. Maybe you can at least control your fall. But stay in here. Probably safer. Oh. Just wobbles back against the wall a little bit. You mm. can see one wing just go out and brace himself. Mm. Grizz, you struggle yourself to your feet. Uh, walk up the stairs. Just, really? How was I the only one to <laughs> walk up the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> you yell back up towards the stairs. You're holding on to the uh, the ship thing. Do you have any um, Do you have any uh, proficiency in navigating air vehicles? Nope. Um, however, uh, I uh, I feel like with uh, the way that Sean, everyone is so mindful of the idea of falling off of things and things. Um, <laughs> one of the one of my hopes is that there is some kind of clip on the wheel. Um, and if this is, I'm, if I'm wearing the captain's gear, there might be a clip on his belt that I can clip myself to the wheel, just in case we start free falling or anything like that. Um, you know, as kind of a safety precaution, so I don't get rip, whipped away from the wheel. There is indeed. Cool. I'm gonna put that on, clip that on, <laughs> and then get back to learning how to pilot this um, this airship for the first time. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so you clip yourself uh, to the uh, the kind of centerpiece buckle of it, uh, and you see uh, you see Greeley look up at you. His eyes get really wide, and then he kind of uh, tries to make his way up to his feet, lurches forward, grabs onto the railing, and then also clips onto the railing, looking over at you, and he's like. Um, Captain, are you uh, you feeling all right? I'm gonna I'm gonna need to kind of close my eyes for a second here. Yeah, you do that. Okay. And he just kind of like leans forward, almost reaches his hand through the railing just to kind of like brace himself and, and grabs onto it as well. And then you can see it start to glow brightly against it, like almost changing the reflection inside your pupils. Make me. Well, you're not good at it. This is just going to be a flat D20. Great. Okay. <laughs> Still intelligence or something like Nope. That? Nope. Okay, cool. Natural 20. Woo! Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're able to hold it on course. It doesn't yank you off. It doesn't toss you onto the side. You're actually able to kind of plant your feet. And you have a pretty good idea, or at least a pretty good feeling, that you think you have an idea, that you've got <laughs> this nailed. I was going more for look than... And yet you <laughs> nailed both. You've got like, you're kind of like holding on back to it, you know, like you've got the, the belt uh, or the, the buckle secured and you're just kind of, ah, yeah, I got this. Even though the stern is still tipping as the, the thing's starting to flutter out, it does give a little bit more oomph as he's closed his eyes and started to concentrate. And there's a sudden updraft of wind you two make me dexterity saving throws. This one with how it's trying to walk up. So I know. Yeah. Uh oh. This is an up gust of wind. Next, is that? Yep. Fourteen. Fourteen. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. <laughs> you are apparently just, you know. We got sea legs. Bowing, <laughs> bowing with it. Legs. And uh, you kind of lurch a little bit coming up over the stairs. You take a couple of like very hurried steps forward, but then you're able to kind of like stop and plant and, uh, and, and brace yourself against the, the railing. Uh, but you feel that gust pick up. It kicks 
as if you were going over a wave, and then it starts to push down again. Uh, you see, what's up? I'm going out to the deck. Okay, you make your, you kind of open the door, come back out to the deck. You see Grizz like standing there right in front of you. <laughs> uh, Grizz, make me a Constitution save. Uh-oh. Natural twenty. <laughs> you start to, and then you look at Lossie and you go. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> So you're continuing to drive, you're able to make it kind of, uh, you, you see the descent, you see it starting to push down. Uh, and as you guys are dropping altitude very quickly, uh, really golden or gold tooth uh, is keeping it, keeping the movement pretty stable. He's able to even start to slow it a bit as you're making your way down. In order to land this, you've been able to, with your, your uh, critical, you've been able to, to actually make a very solid approach towards the tree line, and it seems as though you might be able to settle this down in a pretty solid way. <laughs> but this, you gotta land it. Yeah. The crit's got you there. You, uh -huh. you made your good approach. Let's see how you do with the landing. Okay. Am I getting a little bit more of a feel of kind of how it's working, or am I still just completely... You think you know how all of it works. So I mean, obviously, it's Felix. Yeah. Worst right. captain in the world crashing two ships in the same day. Oh. You guys yeah, are tempting me on this. <laughs> I'm do I re so far. It or what do you want me to do? Oh, yeah, re roll it. But so far, it's only if it jumps off the table that I'm doing a disadvantage. I botched it. What'd you botch? Two. I got seven before, so. Uh, oh, um, well, you crit on the first one. That's worth something. Can I average it? <laughs> um, it will average that. So you'll get like a five. <laughs> Make your way, uh, so about, you know, four, five-ish. Actually, you know what we'll let you do? What? You are an artist. Well, you're from a, an artificer house. Mm hmm. Mm. You didn't give DeVry any information or anything to do. Yeah, no. Um, nope, nope. Mm -mm. I'm really have a chance. <laughs> My conversation got cut short. <laughs> so you were, you, uh, you're leaning, or you're, the, the ship leans down, the nose dips. And what you see in front of you is essentially a very large, uh, almost sea of green. Evergreen trees, pines, uh, their needles like basically creating a swaying sea in front of you. Mm -hmm. As you make the first, uh, as you kind of like move past the first and you can see one very large tree, about almost as wide as the ship. You're able to kind of turn just a little bit, but you hit it very hard. Mm -hmm. The ship seems to, like you see, uh, you see some of the ship splinter a little bit off to the right. Both of you also make me a deck save. You get to make one at advantage. Because of the safety equipment? Because of the safety equipment. I feel like I need a, a clip. Why, why is everyone clipped in? Oh, okay, I feel like... I and then you get rocked. 16. Okay. It's still dense. Yeah. 15. Okay. <laughs> so you feel this like, and it jostles you a little bit. Lossy, and because of the uh, lack of overall size, kind of bobs against the railing, uh, is able to kind of stabilize himself. You tip over it just slightly and then are, are able to grab onto the edge and perch your feet up on top of it. Like you're almost like in a gargoyle pose, <laughs> leaning back just a little bit and then you're able to stabilize yourself and step back down a little bit as the next large obstacle comes up. Would you like to give me another? You are seeing these things. You're not trying to hit them, right? Um, this is base dice roll. It is so. just base because you have no proficiency. 14. 14. Mm -hmm. You are able to dodge the one right after loss. He goes, you're able to see this one, right? Yeah. You're able mm -hmm. <laughs> Pull that one over. You guys lean, but no jostling on this one. Uh, you can start to feel the, uh, the next gust of wind burst up, slowing you slightly as it 
pushes the uh, the hull back up again, and then it's the descent starts. You can see uh, in front of you and feel that heat from the ring start to go out as the wind around you is like just whipping past, replacing any warm gusts of air that would normally hit you like a furnace, more so like a dash of cold wind. You whoosh, whoosh. And then as you are able to kind of see a large clearing coming up to the left of it appears to have a uh, a kind of shallow, or well, you can't tell how shallow or how deep it is, but there seems to be a lake of sorts. That's right. To the right, there is that tree line that we were discussing uh, previously. And uh, in front of you directly is the clearing. You've just pulled yourself away from the tree line in one of the large trees. You have a little bit of a choice here as to which way you're going to try and push the boat. So, hmm, clearing, tree line, and opening. Look, you have what looks like a lake to your left, what looks like an opening in front of you, and what looks like a sea of trees to the right. Um, could I make an insight check? Or a survival check? Uh, ooh. Or something like that. I feel like insight would be a little better, but whatever you feel. Um, hmm. Or nature. You want insight? Go for it. Okay. To lean me in the direction of one or the other. So that'd be a 14 for insight. Okay, so you don't... You don't gain any knowledge from the ground in front of you from that, but you are able to pick up to the right, Greeley looking back and forth between the options, and you see him kind of turn his arm, kind of uh, giving you a better vantage point of where the dragon mark is, and you can see when it pulses, and you can also see that as it pulses, he seems to be trying to will the ship in uh, the direction of the Sea of Trees. Really? I said block it. All right. Um, if that is what I, I think he might be trying to do, then I will try to steer it in that direction. Okay. You will have advantage on steering it in that direction. Okay. Uh, a 19. A 19. That's good. What was the other one? A four. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you start to feel, or as you start to try and fight against uh, the centrifugal force and the gravity that is coming in, you can feel the this gust of wind start to jostle the bottom. It starts to uh, all of you actually feel this like vibration of what what almost is like an extended. Uh, push of wind that comes up. You can see the dark clouds in front of you, that storm that was brewing on the horizon, almost move in a hurried fashion towards you. You see the, the, the twist and turn, the clouds going from dark gray to a thorough black, sparks moving back and forth between them. And that gust of wind seems to pull you a little bit in that direction. And then you get one final burst of hot air out of the ring. And then that's enough to guide you over the flock of tree and the softening embrace of the pine needles as the final of the fiery ring and the final of the wind blow almost creates a entire stop and settle. You hit the nettles and all of the, the pine at the top and then you feel it settle into branches. <laughs> like a nice long pause where everyone's just like. I guess you didn't crash this one too badly.
let go of <laughs> kind of unwhite knuckle myself from the uh, uh, the, the 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 ship's wheel. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Goldie? He's passed out with his face like like caught in between where his arm was pushed out in the railing, just kind of lolling. Just a gush and not something worse. Okay, you, you start to make your way up the uh, uh, up the stairs towards the bridge. Uh, Grizz, make me a survival check. Nature check. Sorry. Nature. Okay. You said nature, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay, you recognize the area you're in as being kind of uh, the initial portion just over the border. Uh, that is the middling point, almost the saddle between the Eldian Reaches and Undare. And then you also hear the sharp crack of wood. Almost as if... the ice across a river was thin and breaking. So we're up. But pretty high in trees right now, right? Yeah. These are very, very, very tall trees. I'm gonna. Uh, how close am I to the the cabin? To the cabin? Yeah. Um, I would say that where the the stairs are and where the uh, cabin is is probably like a good 20, 30 feet. Um, I'm just gonna uh, look for. Is there like any strap or anything to secure myself? Uh, there is still uh, some barrels and stuff like that that are uh, strapped nearby uh, with some uh, rope. Okay, I'm gonna like just dive over there and like just brace myself and. Uh, okay. Oh, I think uh, you want to hold on. <laughs> and yeah, as that, you dive for the the uh, as you dive for the barrels and the rope that's over there, go ahead and give me a. We'll make this an athletics check to see if you can get a hold of it. Hmm. Not bad, though. Woo. Ha. Hmm. Then again. Well, okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. Well, you lunge a somewhat appropriate distance. Make me a sleight of hand check. And while you do that, you watch as Grizz launches himself towards... Uh, you don't. You're, you've got your back to him. Uh, you're making your way up, but you can see... In Felix's eyes, he watches Grizz lunge towards a bunch of barrels, and then uh, you stop, you turn around, kind of look, and then you both hear the cracking of the thin ice, like branches that are there. Are you grabbing? Are you trying to grab onto him? If, uh, no, I'm, I'm going, going to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and loot. what did you get on your, I got an, uh, an eight, an eight. Yeah. Okay. Are you pulling away from him when you say that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to be, uh, like if I hear the crack, I'm like, uh, trying to grab him and just push him into the railing so he can grab hold of the railing. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's pulling himself away from you. You're doing that. You can make me a grapple check. Uh, <laughs> you can contest it. And then, uh, Poor Greeley. Poor gold tooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what did you get on your side of hand? Uh, eight. Eight? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I know. It's not looking Damn. too good Damn. for me. Oh, well. 21. Ah, he beat me. Jeez. Yeah. What did you get? Uh, I think I... Uh, like a 14? Uh, it's your attack bonus, right? No. no uh, it's not even. Your, it would athletics. be athletics for you. Oh, athletics? Yeah, just a straight 10. Okay. So you try and grab on him and he's like... Don't touch me. <laughs> As we fall. <laughs> As you start to fall, the crack, the ship drops. Start to fall. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Hold on. The ship drops. It lurches about 20 feet. You can burn a feather fall if you want to. It's going to be pretty quickly in the instance here. And then Grizz, I'll let, this is what I'll let you decide whether or not you do it. Grizz does not manage to grab hold of the barrels, and he just kind of floats in the air as the ship drops out from under him, disappearing a little bit under another set of branch and bluster of bristle and, and nettle. 
and then you get lurched down with it. Yeah. And Lossian has a little bit of a very light kind of... A little bit. How far at least we're falling? It's only about 20 feet. So you will make an... Ed, uh, if you don't burn a spell, you will make an acrobatics check for me. You will make one at advantage because you're just landing. <laughs> and you're going to face plant. Uh, so you can roll me 2d6. Okay. No, I'd burn it. Okay. 13. And nobody needs to do it because he just, what's, what's, wait, oh. so what's the radius on it or? Uh, 60 foot. Okay. Oh. So you're able to, tr to get everybody. So you actually get yanked down <laughs> by it as like you get the, you get yanked, but then like when the ship stops. Yeah. Oh! Lossian just glides down to the ground like normal and Grizz is whoosh. I'll even make sure I hit Goldie. Okay, that's good. <laughs> He's like, flop, flop, flop. His legs go up. He's still kind of in, entangled into the thing. Um, and as you land, I'll say, uh, as you land, you even grab like the back of his pants and settle him <laughs> down so that he doesn't like snap his neck in between the bars of the railing. Uh, and you can look out now, as you've settled on some of the larger branches, there is still maybe about 300 feet, two to 300 cool. feet between these final branches and the ground, the clearing to your left, and hmm. the lake that spreads out beyond the clearing. And glittering almost like that sea beyond the clearing. It's like the water beyond the clearing. You can see there are what looks like some shards. Jagged stuck into the ground. Some of them sparkling with a little gold iridescence. Some of them of a more bluish appearance, almost like a midnight, reminding you very much of Dream Lily. And there appears to be a campsite somewhere nearby and a bonfire that is burning in a light blue cadence. Probably their camp. Oh. Indeed, and that's where we're gonna end for this week with Lossian pointing out a camp. Is it the Ashbourne? <clears throat> Isn't it? I suppose you'll have to tune in next week to see if the airship breaks these branches. And we'll have to bow out. Yeah, like yeah, the free bow. Yeah, just just leave it there. <laughs> <clears throat> Otherwise, Rudy will bark at us. Keep going. We got some time. You guys might as well get it. I mean, I can I can really take root and just keep them coming if you'd like. Can you? Yeah, they, you're they, blowhard here, so let's see what you get. They, I mean, they they grow out of nowhere, and like I've just got trunks and trunks full of tree puns. Like, you know. Do they grow out of the trunks? Do they grow? I mean. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can branch out in any kind of direction you want me to. Really. Can you? Are yeah. we going to do like a little ring around the inside or the outside or what? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. You want to join in? I feel yeah. like you ran out of your trunks. All right. So with that, <laughs> uh, thank you guys for coming and watching Inkwa. I hope it was a fun episode. I feel like we got to get some interesting character development <laughs> stuff. Right. I feel like Grizz got... Some interesting color. I think my favorite part was lost in talking to that druid. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I could not stop laughing. I feel like everybody that talks to Lossian is like, "Oh, he looks like the one that is going to be the the most logical, like the intelligent." I'll, I'll like talk, and then like at the end of it, they're just like, 
This is a weird creature. I, <laughs> I don't feel like I got through to anything. <laughs> I think I hurt my brain. <laughs> yeah. Can you help us, Brandon? is actually an intellect devourer. He is an intellect devourer. Tasty. Yeah. <laughs> you feed off of the brain waves of dying individuals. <laughs> uh, well, do you guys, like, oh, shoot, man. I don't even know how to end something like this. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah, absolutely. Hope you guys had a good time. Uh, if you like Idle Champions, I do believe that DC made sure to toss out a couple of codes for some gold chests. So uh, maybe he'll be kind enough to recycle those into the chat here. Those should get be good for you maybe through the rest of the evening. Uh, and do you guys have anything you want to want to say? Want to uh, do? Letting us oaking around with you. Oh, oh, you're so savvy. Um, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, you yeah, I yeah. Pun. Oh, you didn't you didn't catch some of the other ones, huh? I can play a couple of the other oh. ones, spruce enough to show it. Yeah, ah! right. I feel like we're gonna just. I'm just pining for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean the the worst the worst thing about the crash landing was the sudden birch at the end. <laughs> Ten minutes more. <laughs> Ten minutes more. I mean, we were marching all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cactus next week as we not, yeah it's, it's a stretch a little bit but it works uh, as we continue down into the Eldine reaches and see what lay below with our I can call you zeros again even though you're not quite does anybody have any like you've got uh you've got the Sputron you're doing? When's the next uh, life action role play? Next life action role play is gonna be next uh, Wednesday. Yeah, it should be next Wednesday. Okay, great. We we record uh, usually every other uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, and so we try to uh, kind of put them out like that. So okay, yeah. Um, Kyle, do you have anything to plug right now? Mm, got new room actors. Where are they now? Stuff showing up on Amazon Prime Video. If you want to go watch a bunch of <laughs> people goofing off and making fun of a bad movie we did. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, I actually got to go watch that bad movie with uh, Kyle. And it was, I was not prepared. <laughs> no for, one's prepared for the level of bad on that. Well, not just that, but the, I wasn't prepared for the audience interaction. Because I've oh. done like Rocky Horror stuff, but I just didn't know. Yeah. I feel like we should make this an outing. When's Weird. the next one we should yeah, do? An, we should do an Inkwell outing. Anybody that's in LA can just come watch Kyle's movie with us. In LA, it's I think it's the first Saturday of the month at 11:59 p.m. All right, we might have to push that to April then uh, because of <laughs> Gary Conn and, and you know possible other things. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like Neverwinter, don't forget to check that out. There's some some stuff there. If you like Dragon Heist or you Soundscape, uh, I'm also Dernin' on that, so you'll be able to kind of like go and, and find that wherever it is. And D&D um, Beyond is wonderful. D&D Beyond was, has been wonderful for that swarm of ravens that turned into uh, Al 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 that Al conspiracy. Al <laughs> the conspiracy mm -hmm. of ravens. Conspiracy. What do you call one? One? A raven. That's right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, a you know, a small collection of um, ravens, like you know, if they're if they're doing anything dangerous, it's uh, you know, like you you're guaranteed to you know kind of catch them on probable cause, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's attempted conspiracy. Yes, exactly. I feel like the chat should just be trying to do as many of it. I'm sure if Larry's in the chat right now, he's mm -hmm. doing as many as he as can. As many foul puns as possible. Oh, so okay. terrible. Mm -hmm. Birds of a feather. They all do it. They all flock. So, yep. uh, <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to catch up with uh, Inkwell, there we do have a few of them that are on podcasts. I believe I'm going to try and get uh, get Ben to do some more of them on yeah on the uh, podcast so we can get caught up. If uh, if it's easier for you to get caught up going into uh, work or driving or whatnot, and then also uh, feel free to check back here and uh, watch from the beginning. Uh, there is a lot of stuff going on, and we may even have a guest next week. Yay. Well, that might be telling. Tally. Telling. Telling. <laughs>
I feel like we already have a character named Tally somewhere. We do. One thing for sure, we won't be bushwhacked. Or you will be. And I think that's it. So we'll see you guys next week. I'm Rudy. I got Kai, Kyle, and Sig Neutron here hanging out with me, playing some D&D in the noir. Didn't seem like it today, did it? No. no it wasn't no. very noirish because we're in the sky. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of leaves. Within the trees. Got back to nature. <laughs> yeah. Just hedging our bets. It's gross. I hate it. Hedging. Ah. Uh, I like that nice. Why did I not do that one? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> Bye. Whinge. Mm-hmm. <laughs>